This is a video about uh, geometry 1111, third pace. And I want to talk a little bit about the theorem 20, which is on page 29 of the pace. And it's a little confusing because all of a sudden they're throwing a bunch of terminology at us that we've not heard of. And they actually don't give a lot of examples. So let's talk about this theorem on page 29. It says the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote angles. So you say, Mr. Ranger, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, not familiar with those terms. So I kind of abbreviated it here so we can look at it. The measure of the external angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two remote interior. So R interior, remote interior, okay? What that means, <clears throat> we're going to illustrate it with three different triangles here and help you see how this um, works, okay, and how we can calculate things. By the way, I'm trying a new setup on my computer. I have a different video camera. I'm trying a different program to see if this is better quality. It still is fast and easy to set up. We'll see how this works. All right. This out here is called the remote, or excuse me, the exterior angle. That's the exterior angle. Here is an exterior angle, all right? Same up here. So it's outside the triangle, and it's along the base. Uh, so there is this line extending out here, and this is 140 degrees. Now let's think about this. If this is 140 degrees, how many degrees would this angle in here have to be? Well, it would have to be, because it equals a straight line, there's only two angles here, so we say they are supplementary, correct? If they're supplementary, it adds up to 180 degrees. So I know that this has to be 40 degrees in here, okay? If this one is 40 degrees, now I don't know how much each of these individually are, but I know that when I add them together, all right, they will have to equal 140 degrees. And how do we know that? Because every triangle will have to also equal 180 degrees. So the same as a line, 180 degrees. Now, if I knew that, for instance, this was, let's say, 70 degrees, okay? So I just kind of made that up. So if that was 70 degrees and this over here was 40 degrees, then that means this angle up here would have to also be 70 because all three would have to add up to 180 degrees. Let's look at this one down here. If this is 110 degrees on the exterior, then that means that this angle inside, right here, would have to be 70 degrees. Now, I don't know what these two are individually, but what this theorem tells me is that if I added these two together, it would equal 110 degrees. And that makes sense because all three triangles, I mean all three angles in the triangle have to add up to 180. So let me just arbitrarily choose a number and say, eh, I'm going to say this one is 40 degrees. So if that's 70 and that's 40, how many degrees would that have to be? So 70 plus 40 is 110, right? Subtract that from 180, so then this would have to be 70 degrees. And so 70 plus 40, right here, these two remote interior angles, add up to the exterior angle, which is 110. So let's illustrate it one more time. This time, I chose to mark these two sides as being equal. So that gives us another clue. Now we know this is an isosceles triangle. If this external angle is 70 degrees, then that means these two angles inside here, let me label this one A and B, okay? So that means A plus B have to equal the 70 degrees. Now here's the other thing I know is they have to be the same number of degrees, okay? Because 
these two sides are equal. So these two angles across from those sides have to be equal. That's the isosceles um, definition. So what two numbers, what number added to itself, okay, would equal 70? And that would have to be 35. So 35 degrees for each of those angles, okay? So as you work through the, um, the proof here on page 29, and looking at the different diagrams, you will see certain, so like angle 1 plus angle 2 would be equal to angle B, C, D. Now they're showing how we get to that proof, okay? But once they have shown this and proven this, then we can use that proof to do some of these other um, problems here on page 30. All right, good luck. Hopefully seeing some illustrations of it with some numbers even will help you better understand this theorem.